So, so at the end of this class, you should be able to describe statistical analysis techniques. You should be able to describe primary measurement skills with appropriate examples. You should be able to define normal distribution and its characteristics. You should be able to highlight appropriate tests under parametric and non-parametric statistical analysis. Uh, you should be able to compute t-test, f-test, chi-square test, and ANOVA using Microsoft Excel. Uh, you should be able to describe non-parametric statistical tests and the associated tests. Then you should be able to describe univariate, bivariate, and multivariate analysis. And finally, you should be able to highlight methods of data presentation with suitable examples. Okay, so um, these among others are what you should be able to do at the end of this section. So to start with, when we say statistical analysis, because this is an essential part of your research. Remember, majority of the research that you will be doing, that we, I mean, the research that the majority of us will be doing are data-driven. So meaning that you have to collect some data, you have to analyze those data, and uh, okay. you need to um, do some uh, um, conclusions based on the result of the analysis. Okay, so statistical analysis techniques allow researchers, businesses, and organizations to make sense of data and guide their decision making. Because this data comes from, of course, from a particular target group, right? So you want to investigate certain things, okay? Then based on the results of investigation, then you can straight away make um, certain decision or conclusion about a particular subject. So there are different types of statistical analysis techniques that can be applied to a wide range of data industry as well as uh, applications. Knowing the different statistical analysis method and how to use them can help you explore data, okay, find patterns, and discover trends in your research. Choosing the appropriate statistical challenge, uh, appropriate statistical test for each research question is the most challenging. I mean, the most challenging feature in statistics, but also the most necessary in order to eliminate measurement errors. Remember, based on the type of research you are doing, will determine the kind of data you will need for your research. The kind of data you need for your research will determine the kind of source of your data. I mean, your target group and your source of data and your collection and um, data collection instruments. Okay, based on the kind of data you have selected, will determine the kind of statistical analysis approach you will be using. So, but in this class, I will be showing you different type of statistical analysis. So it's not left for you to choose the one that suits your need. Okay, I'm not saying that all the statistical analysis tests will be running is what you have to do in your research. Okay, just look at the one that is that's suitable for your research, use it and apply it, pick it and apply it in your research work. Okay, now, well, before we go there, let's quickly discuss about measurement skills. We have various types of three major, four major types of measurement skills. One of them is nominal. We have discussed about nominal data, ordinal data uh, before now. So when we're talking about scale, when we're talking about nominal scale, one of the basic, uh, some of the basic characteristics of a nominal scale is that there are numbers identify and classify objects as yes or no. As these numbers identify and classify objects as yes or no. Then the common example can be uh, student registration, numbers, country of origin, okay? Then um, for those who are in business, uh, if you're looking for 
marketing example that goes in nominal scale, you can look at classification, bank types, gender, and the likes. And what are the permissible statistics that can be carried out on a, norma, on a nominal scale? You can use, for descriptive, you can use percentages mode, and for inference here, you can use chi-square or binomial test. Another scale is ordinal. Okay, what are the basic characteristics of an ordinal scale? Numbers indicate the relative position of objects, but not the magnitude of differences between them. Remember, we say if you have data, uh, okay, let me, let me, let me I'll go back to that. Now, common example of an ordinal scale could be rankings of the top four teams in the Football World Cup. Okay, for marketing example, this figure could be ranking of service quality delivered by a number of hotels or banks, rank order of the top best 100 universities. So permissible statistics under ordinal scale. For descriptive, you can run something like percentile or median. While for inferential, you can rank order correlation Friedman as well as ANOVA. For interval, there's another scale called interval. Even though when you go to st uh, SPC statistics, you will not see this interval scale here. You, can only, you only see um, ordinal, nominal, and uh, scale. Okay, so now interval differences between objects can be compared. Zero point is arbitrary. Common example of an interval could be temperatures. And a common example, common marketing example for interval scale could be attitudes, opinions, index numbers, consumer behavior. And uh, permissible statistics for an internal interval scale on that descriptive could be range, you can compute range, means standard deviation. Okay, for inferential statistics on that interval scale can be product moment, correlation, Okay, correlations, t-test, and number regression, as well as factor analysis. Then lastly, which is ratio, ratio scale. This is a zero on ratio scale means there is a total absence of the variable you are measuring. Okay, so this could be, for example, could be length, weight, and a uh, few others. Then, uh, Marketing example in this regard would be age, income, cost, sales, as well as market share. Now, analysis that can be carried out on a ratio scale under descriptive could be geometric mean, which is center number, or harmonic mean. Then, for inferential statistics that is permissible under ratio scale would be coefficient of variance. Okay, I mean, coefficient of variation. Okay. Yes, we'll be doing some of this. Okay, we'll be running some of these tests. Then as time goes by, you will understand how and when to use some of these uh, tests. Okay, so but in generally, there are four measuring scales, which are the primary measures, measuring scales. We have nominal, ordinary, and ratio, which we have discussed in our last section. I just do this summary. Now, Another thing we need to discuss very briefly, even though we are still going to discuss about it deeply in us in uh, maybe in the next class, is normal distribution. Normal distribution is important because uh, when you're dealing with parametric and non-parametric uh, tests, when you're doing this for parametric or non-parametric tests, uh, for, for parametric tests, your uh, your data have to follow certain distribution. And uh, the most commonly, uh, the most common distribution that most statistic, most statistician always use, or researchers always use or follow is normal distribution. So we have to look at this very briefly now. Later, we'll be seeing how to test whether your data is normally distributed or not. But we will do that when we do, when, uh, we'll do that under SPSS. Okay, but let's quickly look at what normal distribution is. 
An important aspect of the, of the description of a variable is normal distribution. They will check whether your variable is normally distributed or not. If it is normally distributed, there are certain tests that can be carried out on such data. If it is not normally distributed, there are other tests that are available to be used for such data. So if you use the wrong test, if you use the test that is meant for normally distributed uh, variable, you use it for a non uh, a variable that's not normally distributed, definitely you will be getting a wrong analysis result. So all this is to guide you in order to be able to choose the right test for the right variable. Okay, so it is a probability distribution that is symmetric about the mean, showing that data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence than data far from the mean. So if you look at this place, if you look at this diagram towards the right, you can see something like a bell shape. If this is how your distribution looks like, then we can say that your variable or your distribution is normally distributed. Okay. Now, why the normal distribution so important? Because in most cases, the distribution of many statistical tests is normal or follow some form that can be derived from the normal distribution. So it also indicates the type of analysis that can be performed on the data that is selection of tests. Okay, so normal distribution is represented by a group of curves, mean and standard deviation. Actually, there's, there, are, there, are, there are more explanations to this. I'm just giving a very brief overview. Later, we'll, be do, we'll, be go, we'll go deep on this. Then the curves are symmetrical. That is, looks like this, whereby the value of mean is equal to the value of median, and the value of median is equal to that is the theory uh, mean, median, mode have the same value. So then also, it is like it looks like a bell shape. Okay, so if your distribution is like this, then we can say that your distribution is normally, or if your variable is like this, then we can say that your variable is normally distributed. Okay, then with that, you will know the kind of test to use, to apply on such variable. So how do we now test? How do you test whether a variable is normally distributed or not? I'm going to show you that later, but just, see that something is going much Now, let's quickly look at the parametric statistical test. Okay, Parametric tests are hypothesis testing procedures, which assume that the variables of interest are measured on an interval or ratio scale. An observation must be drawn from the normally distributed population. Now, when the dependent variable is measured on a continuous scale, then a parametric test should typically be selected. Okay, when the dependent variable is measured on the continuous scale, then a parametric test should be typically selected. We have many tests under this parametric test, statistical test. One of them is the test. We have F test, we have Z test, and we have ANOVA test. Okay, so depending on which one you want to choose, as long as your uh, your variable follow this particular statement. Fulfill this statement again, you can use any of this. Also, if, of course, there are some conditions that or this also need to be fulfilled, which will be seen in the short term for T-test, when to use T-test, when to use F-test, when to use F-test, when to use ANOVA test. Okay, so the appropriate use of such tests require one to check whether the data fulfill certain assumptions. So first, observations should be independent. Observations should be independent. That is, the occurrence, the occurrence of A should not affect the probability of P. Then second, these are the conditions. So second, the second condition is that data should follow a normal distribution, which means equal to zero and uh, a given variance. So tests such as uh, case, we call it case, actually call, call Mokoro, Smanov, we call it case test, or Shapiro Wick and the Augustino person are used under the null hypothesis to test that the sample data fit a standard normal distribution. How to carry out this kind of test, we'll be seeing that under 
statistical analysis. But here, one thing you have to understand here is that if you are using a parametric, if you want to perform a parameter test, it's either you use T test, F test, Z test, or ANOVA test. Then when do we use test, T test? When do you use F test? When do you use Z test? When do you use ANOVA test? We are going to see that in a short while. Then also, the proper use of such test require one to check whether the data fulfills certain absorption or condition, and what are these assumptions? First, observation should be independent. That's the first assumption, meaning that the occurrence of A should not affect the probability of B. Then secondly, data should follow a normal distribution, which means equal to zero and a given divergence. Once you fulfill these two conditions, then you can use any of these. And therefore, of course, you have to check because if the variable is just two, or whether you are collecting the data from the same person or I mean from the same population, or you are collecting your data from the different population, you that will also that also contribute to the kind of test you use, whether T test, F test, or Z test or ANOVA test. I will tell you this in short one. So now let's look for uh, again some more details on parameter test to have uh, independency test, which is the uh, some also call it student test. So we use this to test one sample or two sample data. Okay, independent variables, maybe males, female, race, or uh, yeah, and this can be Chinese names, place controls. Then uh, you can also have KT test. Okay, so which are for dependent variables before, after, two metal views for the same uh, patients. Then ANOVA occurring between more than two groups. Okay, in this case, let's say you want to consider Malaysia, for example, whereby you have three lists, you have three Chinese and Indians. Then uh, we have personal correlation, which is also part of parametric statistical test, uh, which can be used to check for correlation between two quantitative variables, which could be weight and height and width and age. Okay, so these are the tests that can be done that can carry out under parametric statistical test. Now let's look at this example. Okay, for T test, T test is used when you have two conditions and you would like to compare the differences between them to see if the difference is significant or not. Okay, T test is used when you have two conditions and you would like to compare the differences between these two to see whether the difference is significant or not. So in this example, I want to see if there's a significant difference between my two conditions. Now, what are the basic background of these two conditions? This is my condition here, this is my condition B. The background is that my data came from the same people. Okay, my data came from the same people. Same people were measured for condition A and condition B. Of course, although they were measured in different times. Okay, now condition A was recorded in the morning why the condition B was taken in the afternoon, okay? So if I want to run this analysis, let's say I want to run this, I need to just compute T-test, okay? Now you can use any form of statistical analysis to, to do this. You can use SPSS, you can use HAR, you can use, uh, of course you can use Excel, Microsoft Excel, and of course you can use, you can work it manually here, which is kind of, time consuming. So but in this case, I'll be using Microsoft Excel. Okay, so all I need to do is to define my condition one, my, my data for condition one, my data for condition two, for condition, for condition A and condition B. So I now need to check the, I mean, perform t test on these entries. So based on that value, we determine whether the differences between the two condition are significant or not, okay? So while performing this on Microsoft Excel, there's a formula for it. I mean, there's a method for it. And what is this method? The method is you go to wherever cell where you want the result to appear, then you can straight away, just put equality sign, then you type T dot test, open bracket. Once you do that, you're going to see this suggestion. Okay, so this suggestion is telling you T, oh, sorry, some people are still joining me. Okay, 
this is telling you t the test that's what you just typed in here then open bracket is then the first parameter here what you're having inside this open and close bracket are called parameters so the first parameter here which is array one will be for your first condition okay while the second uh, why the second array you can see there's a comma you have to put comma then go to the next array which is array two this array two will be your condition p so you select whatever you have in here then that will be selected and then you put a comma now that's why i come here say array one value from condition a array uh, array two values from condition b then uh tails you can see you have tails here comma then tails so this tail okay um what i'm saying is that if you want to compute a t-test, okay, let's say you have two conditions, okay? And you want to test whether there's a difference between them, or probably you are suspecting that there's a difference between these two conditions. Then you want, now want to know whether that condition, I mean, whether that difference is significant or not. You cannot simply say that, yes, me are looking at it, the, 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 the difference is significant. No, you need to prove it statistically, okay? Remember, whatever you'll be saying must be statistically proven. So now, how do you now perform this kind of test using t-test on Microsoft Excel? Of course, you can do that on any kind of statistical software, such as you can use, um, of course, you can use SPSS, you can use HAR as well, depending on whichever one that suits your need. But within the scope of this class, I will be using Excel. Then later, in as maybe next week or the week after, we'll, be, we'll see how to use uh, SPSS. Okay, then from there, you see that it's even, it's, it's even easier on SPSS than Excel. But in, but in any case, let me just expose you to how to do this in Excel into this class. Okay, so now how do we now do this? If you look at my explanation in here, I said t test is used when you have two conditions and you would like to compare the differences between them to see if it is significant. Then, so in this example, I want to see if there's a significant difference between my two conditions. What are my two conditions? This is my condition A, this is my condition B. Okay, so this record where collect is from the same people, meaning that this record you're seeing here is from the same population. Okay, if you are if you are drawing your condition from the same population, then you use t test. Okay, if you are drawing from different population, I'm going to tell you what to use. So now, you can also use t test, but of course the parameters is what you have to select carefully. I'm going to explain that in a short while. So now I'm using t test here because one, I want to investigate whether my condition whether the difference between these two conditions are, are significant is significant or not so my con my data comes from the same people okay so my condition a was recorded in the morning excuse me why the condition b was taken in the afternoon so this was recorded in the morning this was recorded in the afternoon from the same people okay from the same people from the same population so now, while doing this, if you want to do perform this test in Excel, you have to select the cell where you want your result to appear. And how do you do that? You just click on any cell, then you type equality sign. Okay, you type equality sign. After you type the equality sign, then you start with T. I write it in lowercase or uppercase, it doesn't matter. Okay? Whether you write it in uppercase or lowercase, it's okay. Whichever one that is easier for your convenience for you is what you should use. You are still going to get the same result. So I type T, then you put this dot operator, just like full stop. Then that will list out all the available functions that are inside these objects. Okay? So those function, you now choose the one that you want. The one I want is test. So I want to do t test because there's also t distribution. Okay. So in my own case, I want to check for. I want to do t test. So I type test. Then you open you open bracket. You type open bracket. When you type that open bracket, you're going to see this suggestion. 
So inside this open bracket, you have four different parameters. One of them is array one, the other one is array two, the, the third one is tails, and the last one is type, all separated by comma. You can see array one separated by comma, array two, comma, array three, I mean tails, comma, then type. Now, what is the meaning of these parameters? The array one is referring to your first condition. Okay, while the array two is referring to your second condition. That is why I put it here. Array one values from condition A. Array two values from condition B. Okay, now you have another parameter called tails. On these tails, you have two options, one and two. Is that now you choose one or you choose two? Now, when do you choose one? You choose one if you have a direct hypothesis. Okay, if you have a direct hypothesis, then it will be one in test. This means that if you can predict the direction of the effect, probably you say condition A, you have effect on condition B. You have some kind of uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, hypothesis like that, then you can use one. But if you don't have any, let's say you don't, you don't have no idea, then in that case, you choose two for the tails. So in this case, you are going to perform two tail tests. Okay, you can perform two tail tests, you choose two. Now for the type, there are three options here for the type, which are one, two, three. So one, you choose one, if the data comes from the same participants, that's from the same population. Okay, you choose one. And like I told you earlier, this condition were taken from the same from the same population. Condition here was recorded in the morning, while condition B was recorded in the afternoon. So still from the same people. So in that case, I'm using one. But if your data come from different groups, okay, if your data come from different groups, let's say this is from a separate group, it's also from a separate group. Okay, then you cannot use one. Okay, you cannot use one. You can either use two or three. Now, when do you use two? You use two if the variance associated with each group are the same. That if you are sure that the variance of both groups are the same, then you use two. How do you check for that? We're going to see how to check for equality for equal variance later. But if you're sure that the variance of both groups are the same, then you use two. But if you are not sure, or probably you are so sure that the variance of the of the of the of, of the two groups are not the same, then you straight away use three. Okay, so that's what I said. If the data comes from different groups and variance associated with each group are not the same, choose three. Okay, but in my case, the data come from the same participant, from the same group. So as such, I don't have to worry about equality of variance or not. So I just choose one. Okay, so in this case, I fill up my array one with this. I fill up my array two with this. Then I put one in here. Okay, then I also choose, uh, because I, Believe that there's a significant. The, I believe that the the there's a difference between the two, but I'm not really sure whether it's significant or not. So I just use. But I have a particular focus. Okay, so I just use one tail test. That's why I choose one. Then for type, I choose one because the data come from the same participants. So when I run this test, when I run this, when I execute this function then I got something like this. So I got something like 0 0.1, I mean 0 0.01690076. And this is my p-value. That's my probability value. Now, this value will now be taken to compare. You have to compare this value with 0 
Okay, when you compare this value with 0 0.05, you see that with this value, it shows that the difference between the two conditions are insignificant than 0 0.05 because this value is less than 0 0.05. But if this value is greater than 0 0.05, then you can say that the differences between these two conditions are significant. Okay, the difference between the two conditions is significant, statistically significant. But if this is what you get, even if you round it up, all you will get is 0 0.02. If you round up two decimal places, and which is still less than 0 0.05. Okay, so if this is what you are getting, then you say that the difference between the two conditions are insignificant. But if this value is greater than 0 0.05, then you can say to me that the difference between the two conditions are significant. Okay, so let's quickly see how this works. Let me show you how this works, how this is done. See, so I have uh, So I have my data in here. This is the same data I just showed you now from my example. This is the same data I show you here, this one. So this is that I have here. And all I did just just type in, okay? Just type in, I'm not done anything, any other anything different. So I want to check. I want to check the condition whether the difference is significant, like I said earlier. So how do I perform this? Well, I want my result to appear somewhere here. And I probably, I can straight away just say, I can type my P value somewhere here. Then I, have, I want the result to show here. So all I have to do, I just say equality. And I say T dot, you can see there are many functions that can be used in it, depending on what you need. But all I'm interested in is the last one, which is test. So I just type test, then I open brackets. So when I open the bracket, these options pops out, and these are the parameters that come with this function. So in my case, I can straight away uh, select this and uh, select all this. Okay. Then I put comma, then I select this also, and I click and hold and drag it down, okay? Then I put comma. I told you, you have two options here. One thing test, if you have some kind of clue of the direction of where, if you have, if you have something that you are expecting, maybe you have some kind of out, outcome you're expecting, so you can say to we use one thing test. But if you don't have a use to test, then in my case, I just, I know that there's a difference, but I'm not really sure whether the difference is significant or not. So I just use one. So then I put comma. Now I want to check for the type. You have one, you have two, you have three. When we say paired, it means that is the the the, the 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 samples come from the same uh comes from the same uh population. Okay. And if uh, if that's not the case, I can use two. If I'm using two, that means the sample comes from different population, but they have equal variance. But if that's not the case, let's say they don't have equal variance, even though they come from different population, then I can use three. Okay, because we're on equal variance. In my case, I'm going to use one. Okay, because it's from the same population. So I press one, and I close this bracket, and I press one. I press enter. Then I get this result. Okay, I got this result. Now, if you check this result, even if you if you if you make it to two decimal places, so let's see. Uh, so to two decimal places, this is what you get. This is zero point zero two. So zero point zero two is less than zero point zero five. Okay, 0 0.02 is less than 0 0.05. So 
So therefore, we can straight away write our result as saying that with this p value, it shows that the difference between the two conditions are insignificant at 0 0.0, at 0 0.05 level. Okay? So this is how to report this kind of test. Okay, so now we move to so that's that on the so let's move to the next test. Uh -huh. For F test, if we want to perform F test, it's a bit different from T test. So we can use F test to test whether the two variances of two populations are equal or not. So now if your selection is from different population. How do you check whether the variances are equal or not? Now, assuming you have this population in here. So, and you have, this is what you want to test. You have two hypotheses. Yes, please. So 0 0.02 is Zero point zero two is less than zero point zero five, right? And that is why we said, look at this place. This zero, you get zero point zero two here. That's your p value. Your p value is less than zero point zero five. This is what we are comparing with. This one, yeah, this one we are comparing with. The fact that it's less than this, then we say that it is not significant. But if this value is more than this, greater than this, then it's significant. Okay, this is our p value. Now, if you say that your definition of Please hold on, okay? Uh, use definition of p-value. Yeah, this is p-value, this is probability value, okay? And how do you compute your probability probability, uh, probability value is what I just put here for t-test, okay? That's what I just put here for t-test, okay? And how do you compute that? You type in equality sign, you put t, what is the object of uh, of a particular class? Then dot test. Test is the function that we want to execute. Then open bracket. Inside this function, you have four parameters. One is array one. The other one is array two. The third one is tails, and the last one is type. Each of these parameters are separated by comma. Okay. So what you do is that for this first one. You select your first condition, comma, but second one, you select your second condition, comma, and for tails, you have two options, which is one or two. You choose one if you have a direct hypothesis. That is, then it will be one. I mean, choose one if you have a direct hypothesis, then it will be one tail test, okay? If you can predict the direction of the effect, Otherwise, you choose to for two this test. Okay, then for type, we have three options. One, if the data comes from the same participants, okay, that is, is from the same population. Two, if the data comes from different groups and variance are shifted with each group at the same. Okay, how do you test for that? That's what we're about to discuss in the F test. But if you are not sure, if you don't, if the variance are not the same, okay, then you use three. But if the variance are the same, you use two. But if variance are not the same, you use three. Okay. For significant, how you interpret and that's why I said, if it's the thing, you just say with this value it shows that the correlation between this function are significant at this. Then you can put the p value and put this value inside open and close by the of p. 
you can just put in front of you can put inside open and close bracket in front of p value. I mean what you get in here, you can put something here. I'll just change this one to simple Uh okay, so now I do not check for this uh uh equality of variance. So we use F test to test whether two variances of two populations are equal or not. So in here I have this following uh data. So my first my non-hypothesis states that both of them have equal variance. Okay, that is the non-hypothesis state that the variance of both groups are equal. Okay, then my alternate hypothesis that is. Alternate hypothesis will always be the opposite of your null hypothesis. Okay, my alternate hypothesis says that the variance of both groups are not equal. So how do I test this? Okay, to do this, it's very simple. What you have to do is that in Excel, you click on data tab. Okay, then from there, go to the group of analysis. Then from there, you click on data analysis. Once you click on data analysis, then you select F test for two sample of variances. Okay, then you click OK. Once you click OK, then you fill up the variable one and variable two range with what you have here. Okay, then you choose how to put where you want your, your result to appear. So once you're done with that, you just click OK. You are going to get this result. Now, when you get this result, two values are what we actually need here which are the F value and the F critical one tail value. Now, if you look at this place, you see that the M value is 17.8 to one, whatever, and other value. So now, if you look at F critical value, you will see that is we have 4.20665 and the likes. So now, you will see that the F value is greater than the F critical value. If this is the case, okay, if this is the case, then you can simply say that the F value is greater than the critical one thing value. Therefore, we reject null hypothesis. We reject H O. You don't have to put null hypothesis, so just say I will reject H O. So meaning that what is our H O? The H O states that the null hypothesis states that the variance of both groups are equal. But now that this F is greater than this, it shows that the variance are not equal. And even uh, if you look at it here, these are the variance. The variance for female is this, and the variance of male is this. These are not equal, right? So from this you can see, but how do we now prove this? How do we uh, report this? Then we can simply see that the n value is greater than the critical one tail value, therefore, we get H O. So, and then if we get H O, then we have to accept H1, which is our alternate hypothesis. And what do we have in our alternate hypothesis? Alternate hypothesis states that the variance of both groups are not equal. Okay. So, how do we do this? Put a set here. So in here, I have the data here also. We have this. Okay. So we have this data. Uh, you need to go to data tab here. Then uh, from there, you look at analysis. You have analysis at the top here. If you don't have this in your Excel, no problem. Just go to file, then go to options. Okay. Then from options, you go to add-ins. Okay, you click on add-ins, then here, manage. Okay, then you click Excel add-ins. Okay, once you click Excel add-ins, then click on go. Once you click on go, make sure you check this space. Okay, you check analysis to pack, then you click okay. Once you do that, you're going to have this option in your ribbon. Okay, so now I want to check, I want to perform F test. So I click on data. Then I come to this place and I choose data analysis. So here I'm looking for F. 
I want to do F test. So I have it in here. F test to sample for variances. Then you click select, I click OK. So when you click OK, you have variable one range. I have variable two range. Okay, so for your variable one range, you click on this icon that this arrow up pointing arrow. When you click on this, this will come. So you select your first items here. Okay, you see it's already selected. Just click this place. Then it will be filled up. Then you click on the second one. You do the same thing here. Okay, then you click this. Now, we want the labels to be here if you want. I just select on this label. This is alpha value, just by default, just leave it the way it is. Then where did I want the result to appear? Because straight away click on this, then select this, and I want, the, I want the result to appear somewhere here. Then the reference to that cell will display here. So I just click on this one, then I click OK. Then I have this. Okay, so now I can extend this to make it more visible. So now, this is my FTT core value. And this is my F value that I had shown you so just now. So this one is greater than this. Okay. So if you want to report this, and of course this is the valence for female, and this is the valence for male, we show that it's, they're not equal. So, but again, how do you report this? You can straight away report it by saying that uh, the F value is greater than uh, the critical one thing value. Therefore, we reject, you know, we reject each one and we accept each. We reject, we reject each zero and we accept each one. So that is how to perform. That's how to check for the equality of variance using F test in Excel. Okay. Now, ANOVA. We can use ANOVA to test when comparing between two, I mean, between more than two groups. We have been using, we have used two groups, right? So the first one, when we used the test, we collected the data from the same population. The second one, the data were collected from different population, but again, uh, we check for equality of variances. But this time around, what if your group are more than two? If your group are more than two, we're still going to do more about, we're still going to do more on ANOVA later when we get to SPSS, but of course, it can still be done on uh, Microsoft Excel. And that's why I'm introducing you to, I'm introducing you to you now. So this example illustrates how to compute one way and over in MS Excel. So here we have this data. For young, we have this group. For middle, we have this group. And of course, for old, we have this group. So what we want to do is that we want to check whether the variance of the theory groups are equal or not. So if the variance of the three groups are equal, then we accept we accept null hypothesis. But if the variance of the three groups are not equal, then we reject uh, we reject null hypothesis and we accept alternate hypothesis. Now, how do we now do this? We follow the same method that was used in the F test. So here you have this group, I mean, you have this data. So after you run your, uh, your test, then you check your p-value. Again, the p-value here is 0 0.01858, uh, which is also less than 0 0.05. So with the p-value less than 0 0.05, we check the null hypothesis that states that the variance of the three groups are equal. Okay, so how do you perform this? Same way you did in the previous example. So let's quickly look at that. So here, I have my data. I have my data in here. 
So I want to check. So let's go to, let's go to data tab and I click on data analysis. And here I select ANOVA for single factor oh, because I'm always investigating the equality of variance. So I'm choosing a single factor. So I did okay. Now for input range, I click on this up point in arrow. Then here I can click hold, then drag to cover everything. Then you release, sorry, we select again. Okay, let me just see. Okay, so you select all, then you release. So once that is done, you click on this icon again. And here I want the label to appear in my results. So I click on this. If I don't want the label to appear, I just ignore. So here I want to specify where I want the result to appear. Excuse me, then. I just want it to appear somewhere here. Click on this, then I click OK. Then I have this. So these are my labels. Young, middle, old. This is the count, all the 10, 10 records. Then this is some of the data, this is the average, and this are the variances. We are looking at this, you see that the variances are not actually equal. So with that, you straight away go and check your p-value. So since your p-value is less than 0 0.05, you can see that this your null hypothesis is rejected. Because your null hypothesis states that three groups have equal values. Okay, so this is how to perform a uh, uh, single factor ANOVA in Microsoft Excel. Then um, now. That is that on parametric uh, analysis. So let's look at non-parametric statistical test. With when data fails to fulfill the assumption of a parametric test, the two assumptions I mentioned earlier, if your data fails to fulfill those tests, those assumptions rather, the searcher opt for non-parametric test, given the fact that they are less restrictive. Okay, the test can also be used for small sample size of less than 30. And the variables are non-metric. That is not based on the meter as a standard of measurement. non parametric tests also assume that the variables are measured on a nominal or ordinal scale. The widely used non parametric tests include, you have chi-square, we have Fisher's exact test, we have man with me with test, we have McNamara's test, we have will causing, uh, some rank test. We have well causing sign rank test. We have a uh, Coscal Wallis one way analysis of variance. We have Spearman correlation, among others. Okay, but in this class, we will only be looking at high square tests. Of course, we are still going to perform some of these tests in when we get to statistical and when we get to uh, SPSS. Now, how do we now perform chi square on Excel? This, let's look at this. This example illustrates how to compute chi square test. So, in this example, we have a sample of 200 people. Okay, 200 people that visited a local pub. We want to perform a chi square test to, of independence to see if there's an association between gender and smoking status in our sample. Okay, we want to test if there is an association between gender and smoking status in our sample. Now, our null hypothesis states that there is no association between gender and smoking status. And the alternate hypothesis says that there is an association, okay, there's an association between gender and smoking status. Now, null hypothesis will be accepted if P, that is the probability value, if the P value is greater than uh, 0 0.05, then uh, um, H1 will be rejected. But if the P value is less than 0 0.05, we will accept the alternate hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so if your p-value is greater than 0 
null hypothesis will be accepted and alternate hypothesis will be rejected. Remember, hypothesis are just clear, meaning that if null hypothesis is accepted, it means that there is no association between gender and smoking status. That's what it means. But if null, if, if, alternate, if alternate hypothesis is accepted and null hypothesis is rejected, that means that there is an association between gender and smoking status. Okay, so now how do we now do this test? First of all, you need to have what is called observed data as well as expected, uh, expected computation. Now, for the observed data, these are the records that were gotten. Okay, so now from the local pub. So now they were categorized into two. We have the smokers. And we have the non-smokers. Okay, so for the smokers, of course, we have the male and we have females. For the smokers who are who are male, we have twenty-nine, and males that are non-smokers, we have seventy-one. For smokers who are female, we have sixteen, and for non-smokers who are who are female, we have it is eighty-four. So these are what we're recording. But in order for you to be able to compute your chi square, in order for you to be able to investigate this hypothesis, you need to compute your expected observation. That's it, or your expected values. So we have the same thing like this. You have the smoker, no smoker, main female. So how do we compute this? The formula for computing this is. Uh, okay, before then, we need to add up the rows and the columns of this value. So we add up this, we put the result here, we add up this, we put the result here, we add up this, we put the result here, we add up, we add up. so we are going to have something like this. Okay, so after that, then you work out the expected value for each entry of the table. And what's the formula for computing this expected value? The formula is just row, I mean row total multiplied by column total divided by overall total. So in order to get the first value in here, you need to get the row total for male, which is this, multiplied by the, co the, 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 the we're talking about small castle, by the column total, which is 45. Then divided by the overall total, which is 200. And when you compute that, you will get 22.5. That is how you will do for the other entries as well. So once you are done with that, then you compute your p-value. Okay, once you compute your p-value, and how do you compute your p-value? We use almost the same thing we did for the t-test. So here, you just type in the quality sign where you want your your answer to, I mean, your, your value to be displayed. Then you put a quality sign, then you type chisq dot text, then open bracket, then you select, this one take two parameters. This take two parameters, unlike the other one that took four parameters. And what are the parameters? It's going to request for the observed value, and the expected value. Okay, so you select this value, comma, you select it for the expected value. Okay, that is what the system will use to compute your p value. And when you have this value as a p value, then now check if it is less than 0 0.0. Uh, when it is less than 0 0.05 or not. If it is less than 0 0.05, then we accept alternate uh, hypothesis. Otherwise, we accept null hypothesis and we get what the alternate uh, hypothesis. But in this case, it is less than 0 0.05. So we accept alternate hypothesis and we reject null hypothesis. Okay, so let's quickly see how this can be done.
So here, I have this data. I told you, you need to compute the expected values. But before then, you need to get the sum of these ones. So the sum of the row, you just see is equal to this plus this. And this will give you 100. Like you can straight away put this down. And this will be computed for this percentage as well. Then you do the same thing for this place. You can call to this cell plus this cell. Then you press enter. Then here you can straight away drop this. And this will drop here. Now, this plus this will give you 200. And this plus this will also give you 200. So what you have to do is just equal to, you can say sum in brackets. Then you put this, you drag, uh, you put this, uh, sorry, equal to sum in bracket, this, comma, this. This and close a percent. So here you have computed your total. Okay. You have computed your total. So this one I can also make it bold and also make it with the simple. Okay, so now the next thing is to compute my value for. Uh, expected whatever here. So expected values for this will be row total multiplied by column total divided by uh, the overall total. So for this smokers, I'll say equal to my row total for meals. Okay, I select this. But before then, I can say open brackets, select this. I multiply by column total, close, divide by my overall. Then I press enter and I have this. Okay, so I can uh, also do the same thing for female. So I say is equal to my row total. Sorry. My row total multiplied by my column total, which is for smokers, close bracket, divide by the total, the overall total, and I press the like this. For non-smokers, I can say equal to, open bracket, uh, the row total for male, say the same, multiplied by the column total, which is for non-smoker, which is this, then divided by the overall total. Let's enter and have this. So I do the same for females. So which is equal to the row total uh, multiplied by the column total, okay? Then divided by the overall total, which is this. So now I've gotten my expected value. So now in order for me to compute my P value, just like the way it was stated here, I can straight away say that I want my P value to be in front of these cells. I can succeed in the value. Okay, then here I can say equal to C H I. You can see you have many C H I whatever about. We are interested about the test. So G S Q dot test. Okay, then I open brackets. Now you can see here we have actual range and expected range. So for this place, I will select these values, okay? Once I select, I hold this, you can see the reference to those cells 
will be shown, will be displayed inside my function. So all I need to do is just press comma. And now, when I press comma, the expected range will become bold. So meaning that it's expecting me to enter values for the expected range. So to do that, I will do the same thing. I, I will repeat the same thing I did for the observed value. So I select this one as well. When I selected, after selecting, you see, the reference to those data have been displayed. So all I need to do now is to close, close brackets and I press enter. And with that, the value from my, my P value will be computed. And if you look at the value compared to what we have in here, it's also the same thing. So based on that value, you do your interpretation. Okay, so that is how to compute a uh, square test in Microsoft Excel. Okay, so now for the examples of town statistical tests, you can have analysis that let's say you want to compare means between two independent groups. You want to compare two independent two men between two independent groups. For example, the manager who are men have higher average salaries than managers that are female. In this case, you can compute two sample t tests. And uh, if you are looking at non-parametric tests in this regard, you can compute when causing rank sum test. Again, if you want to compare two quantitative measurements taken from the same individual, Okay, for example, you can see exam student diagnostic test results before and after a unit of study. In this case, for parametric tests, you can use P test, PRT test. This is what we did in the first example. Then for non-parametric tests, you can use what we call the sign test. Then also, let's say you want to compare means between three of uh, three of three or more independent groups, sorry, three or more independent groups. Then something like, you can say, is there a difference in crop yield if a farmer uses fertilizer A, B, or C? So in that case, you can use analysis of variance and over on the parametric test. And uh, for non-parametric test, you can use cross scale Wallis test. Then also, let's say you want, to you want to estimate the degree of association between two variables, okay? Something like, does the number of hours a person spends on social media affect the number of hours they sleep at night? Okay, in that case, you can use piercing coefficient of correlation for parametric tests. But for no parametric tests, you can use power strength correlation. Okay, so that is how, these are the various tests that can be used based on various or the following circumstances. So. Depending on the circumstances that surround your own kind of research or your own kind of data, you determine the test that you will be applying in your research. Okay. Again, uh, just another illustration. Now, let's say you want to, you are, you are, you are thinking, okay, we have one sample to the test. We have to sample only to the test. We have to sample related z-test. We have one sample t-test. We have to sample unrelated t-test. We have to sample related t-test. When do you select this test? Or when do you apply this test in your research? The first question you may need to ask yourself is, is or are the same size greater than or equal to 30? If they are greater than 30, that is yes. Then the next question you may ask yourself is how many samples of data do you have? If it is one, you use one sample set test. Mm -hmm. If it is two, are the two samples independent? If yes, you use two sample unrelated set test. But if no, you use two sample z uh, two sample related z test. Okay, but here. If the sample is less than 30, okay, do you know the population variance? If you know the population variance, then we go to this place, then you continue like this. But if you don't know the population variance, you ask yourself further, how many samples of data 
do you have? If it is one, you use one sample clip. So if it, if it is two, you ask yourself, are the two samples independent? So if they are independent, you use two sample unrelated t tests. But if they are not independent, you use two sample. Uh, I mean, are the two samples independent? Yes, you use this. But if your answer is no, you use two sample related t tests. Okay, this is just an illustration to guide you on which test to use and when. Is it necessary to find population areas? No, it depends. It depends on it depends on the test you want to use. Like I told you in the first test you did on uh, on the t test, we don't care about the population variance, right? But if you are selecting your data from different population, okay, you are you are collecting your data from different population. Definitely, you need to check the population variance in order for you to know the kind of test you will be performing. Okay, remember for the T, at a point here, you can choose one, two, or three, right? You choose one if your data is coming from the same population, that is peer test. But if your data is coming from different, two different population, then you have to check whether the variance are equal or not. If the variance are equal, then you use two. But if the variance are not equal, then you use three. This is when you need to check for the population variance. Okay, so now we have univariance. Excuse me, let me stop sharing. I don't know why this is showing. Sorry, just a minute. This is a answer. Aha. Uh -huh. So now univariance analysis is another type of analysis. Univariance analysis uh, deals with one variable. Yes, please. Can we use testimonies of samples? Uh, it depends on it depends on how you. What is my testimony of sample in the first place? Maybe if you explain that to me, I will understand. It. Maybe to answer. It. Uh, good afternoon, professor. The testimony. Uh, if I'm doing a case study uh, for my patients. Yes. Uh, so I'll be taking a testimony of my patient after a six months program, how they are feeling, how the outcome. So that those testimonies, can I use my research work? Yes, you can do, but of course you have to code them. Okay. Mm. That's what we discussed last week. You have to represent them in the figure. Okay. Mm. So from there, you will know how to, and because those figures you are recording, mm -hmm. of course, within a certain range. They will now determine if your population is from the same place, if your data is from the same population, the same population, then tell me whether you're going to use the test or F test or the likes. So these testimonies will come under what? These testimonies will come under what? Under what data? The testimony, remember, we have nominal data and uh, ordinal data, right? Ah. So ordinal data are those data that have follow certain order. Okay. So nominal data doesn't follow any data, any any order. Okay. So now depend on the kind, the way you have structured, the one you have applied. Okay. I mean, how, what you are going to do. Okay. I think we please check for more detail. Please check our last slide. Okay. So now let's quickly discuss Thank about. You, uh, you're welcome. So let's quickly discuss about univariance uh, analysis. Individual analysis deals with only one variable, just one, otherwise known as a single variable analysis. It doesn't deal with causes or relationship, only regression, and its major purpose is to describe the data, that is descriptive statistics. So it takes data, summarize that data, and find pattern in the data. Methods to describe pattern, uh, patterns found in, in, in univariate uh, data include you can have central tendency, which include mean mode median. You can have dispersion, which includes range variance, maximum minimum quartiles, which include interquartile ranges, as well as as well as uh, standard deviation. And of course, you can display this using uh, bar graph, pie chart, histogram, frequency distribution tables, and the likes. Okay, example of univariate variance can be, invariant variable can be uh, gender. 
So let's quickly look at, uh, okay, then we also have bivariant analysis, which identified the relationship between two variables. So here, it is a form of statistical analysis used to find out if there is a relationship between two sets of values. So it usually involves the variables X and Y. Okay, for example, the issue between smoking and lung cancer. Another example could be if you want to find out the relationship between calorie intake and weight. Calorie intake will be your independent variable X, and weight will be your dependent variable Y. So with bivariant analysis, there is a Y value for each X. Now, let's say you have a calorie intake of 3,000 calories per day and a weight of 300 calories. So here, you will write that the X variable followed by Y variable is also like 3,000 comma 300. So you can have X comma Y, this is uh, X comma Y, L comma D, depending on how you have collected your, 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 your data. So, now, common type of bivariate uh, analysis include you can use scatter plot to analyze, to perform bivariate analysis. You can use regression analysis, you can use correlation coefficients, which we'll be doing in a following in our next class. Okay, I mean, we'll do some of them in our next class. Now, we also have multivariate analysis. So, this identified relationship between more than two variables. For example, so the association between alcoholic, smoking, and lung cancer could be an example of multivariate analysis. So multivariate analysis is used to study more complex set of data than what univariate analysis methods can handle. So this type of analysis is mostly performed with software that is such as SPSS or SAS. As working with even the smallest of data sets can be overwhelming by hand. So it's better for you to use those analysis software to perform this kind of analysis. So multivariate analysis method include additive trees, multidimensional multi scaling, cluster analysis, principal component analysis, and the likes. So which method you choose depends upon the type of data you have and what your goals are. Okay, now, what are the methods of data presentation? After you have done your analysis, you may want to present, right? You may want to display and show your, uh, your findings. So there are several ways by which this can be done. It can be done in tabular method, and it can also be done graphically. So if you're talking about tabular, it may be simple table, and it may be complex table. For graphical, for quantitative data, you can use histogram. You can use frequency polygon. You can use frequency curve. You can use line chart. You can use normal distribution curve. You can use cumulative distribution curve. You can use the scatter diagram. Excuse me. For qualitative data, you can use bar chart. You can use pictogram. You can use a pie chart. You can use a map diagram. Okay. Let's look at this one after the other. Now, for data tabulation. Tabulation is the first step before data is used for analysis. Tabulation can be in the form of simple tables or frequency distribution table that this data is split into convenient groups. So a good table should include the following parts. Okay, one is the table number and title. That is the label of that table. So these are placed above the table. The title is usually written right after the table number. Then uh, you can have captions of head. Okay, this refers to column and rows. The caption you have here. Okay, these columns and rows, whatever you have here. Then you can have body, so which contains all the data under each sub head. Okay, then you have source, which indicate the data if the data is secondary and it should be acknowledged. So you have it somewhere here. This is how you are going to put, if you want to have any table, any of your statistical table in your write-up or your thesis, all these features, all these uh, parts have to be there. Okay. 
And if that particular table is taken from someone's work or whatever, you need to hide the source. But if it is computed by you, you can say that this is a researcher's computation. Okay? So in any case, it can be simple. If it's like this, then it's a simple table. Okay? And let's look at this example. Look at this when we have table one, distribution of 50 patients at the hospital in May 2021, according to their ABO blood groups. So you have the type two, you have the type two, the caption, you have the type of the form, and you have the body of the model. So we assume that this particular table is computed by the researcher. But if it is not computed by this, let's say it was adapted by someone's research work, it is advisable for you to put source and reference that particular uh, research work. I mean, cite that particular research. Then it can be it can be like it can be a little bit more complex compared to the previous one I just showed. So you can have something like table two, where the distribution of 50 patients at the hospital in February 22, according to their age. They can have something like this. They can also have it this way. But the most important thing is that the caption must come at the top. Okay, the caption of the table must come at the top. The caption of figures comes beneath, under the figure, while the table is at the top of the table. Now, now you can also have it this way, distribution of 20 lung cancer patients at the hospital and 40 controls in January 2022, according to smoking. And then you can have something like this. So cases, you have number of cases, their percentages, control, you have number of controls and their percentages, and you have the data, which is a little bit more complex than what we have been showing earlier. Okay, and it can also be like this. Okay, it all depends on how you want to represent your, uh, how you want to design your table. And of course, some table will come from your SPSS. Just take it, take them from there and just put them in your thesis. Now, you can also represent your research or your, I mean, your, 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 your analysis in a graphical uh, form. That's where we have graphical representation. So here we have uh, a graph or chart portrays the visual presentation of data using symbols such as line, dot, bars, or slices. So it depicts the trend of a certain set of measurements or shows comparison between two or more sets of data or qualities, or quantities rather. So for quantitative data, you use histograph. That's the polygon, scatter diagram. And uh, we have line diagram. Okay, so then for qualitative data, we have bar charts as well as pie charts. Okay, so depending on what you want to determine, when you, then of course, don't worry yourself about all this, especially when you're using SPSS. All these are very simple to do in SPSS. The most difficult part is how to interpret your results. As long as you have data in SPSS, analysis is very simple. Just by click, 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 click. So, but the only, the most difficult part is how to interpret that particular analysis, that result, okay? But you don't have to worry about all this. The only thing you need to know is when to use, what to use at a particular point, okay? Once you identify that, then you're good to go. Now, Nominal data presentation. Here, if you look at this, you can represent your data, represent your data in a tabular form. The same data can still be presented using bar charts. And the same data can also be presented using pie charts. All are the same. So it depends on which one you choose. Okay. Now, we also have what is called summary statistics. Okay, summary statistics summarize and provide information about your sample data. This always happens when you first run your statistical analysis test, especially in SPSS. The first table you'll be saying is more or less is, is, is your statistical, uh, is your descriptive statistics. Okay, that's saying give information about your data. 
So it tells you something about the values in your data set. This includes where the mean lies and whether your data is skewed or not. So it falls into three main categories. One, measures of location, also called central tendency. So here, mean, also called the arithmetic mean or coverage, uh, geometric mean used for interest rate or other types of growth, trimmed mean, which is the mean with outliers, excluded or that is a piece of data that is uh, an abnormal distance from other points. Then of course, median, the middle of a data set. They can also have measure of spread, which is which will include range, how spread how the data is, interquartile range, where the middle 50% of the data is. Then quartiles, which are the boundaries of the lowest, middle, and upper quartiles of data. Then skewed, which does your data have mainly low or mainly high values. Then cortices, a measure of how much data is in the tails. And the third uh, category could be is a graph or chart, which can include histogram, frequency distribution table, box plot, bar chart, scatter plot, as well as pie chart. But basically, summary statistics summarize and provide information about your sample data. Now, how do you now determine the appropriate statistical test? So regardless, you have to believe, regardless of, your, of which strategy of the statistic analysis method you pick, try to take exceptional note of every expected drawback, just as there are different formulas. So there is no highest quality level or wrong or right technique to utilize. So it will solely rely, it will rely upon the kind of information you have gathered, okay? Just as the bit of knowledge you are open to have as a final product. So you have to understand, okay, this is t-test. When do we use t-test? These are the conditions for using t-test, okay? And these are the parameters that needed to be filled if you want to use t-test. Look at some conditions. T-test come under parametric test. Okay, so look at the conditions that cause the parametric test. Check those conditions and see whether they go in line with what you have. If they go in line with what you have, then you apply that to your research. But if it doesn't go in line with what you have, then you try non-parametric test. Okay, definitely you fall into these two categories. So if you are use non-parameter tests, there are a lot of tests under param under non-parameter tests that you can try. One of them is chi square that we just did. So look at that. Look at some of the conditions that also surrender one and choose the one you want to use. Okay. Like I said, there's no highest quality. There's nothing like maybe T test is better than this. Well, what will be by particular test is better than this. Maybe this one will be giving me a better answer. As long as the test suit your need. Please stay with that, apply it in your research, get your work done, analyze your work, and do your, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, report your findings accordingly. Okay, so that is, yes, yes. Now can you please share a table of different tests and type of variables? Uh, we have discussed about this before. I have discussed about type of various type of variables and uh, data that you can have. I think we discussed that in the last two sections. And uh, we talk about uh, table of different tests. Yeah, we have discussed about that just now, right? We have. I even gave you. I even gave you a summary, right, of what test and what situation you can use that particular test. If you don't mind, I can still repeat, I can show you again, so you understand what I'm talking about. But before I do that, let me quickly share the, uh, to this link. The chat box. So please. Uh, I have shared the attendance link, so please fill it up. Now, what I was saying is that uh, if you look at this place, Okay, I have something here, right? So you can have a look at this. 
Okay, so the analysis type, if you want to compare me between two independent uh, groups, example could be, let's say the managers who are, I mean, who are men have higher average salaries than managers that are female. In this case, if you want to perform a parametric test, then use two sample data. If you want to perform a non parametric test, then use the causal graph. So, of course, you have to determine whether you are going to use parametric test or no parametric test based on those conditions I mentioned earlier. Then, here, there's another scenario which could be probably you want to compare two quantitative measurements taken from the same individual. Example could be examine student diagnosis test result before and after a unit of study. So in this case, you are collecting your data from the same population. So as a result, if you are to use the parametric test, they will be using PAT test. And this was the example we run just now. Then if you are to perform a non-parametric, let's say your data do not fulfill those two conditions, then let's say your, your, your data is not normally distributed. Okay, then you can use well causing sign rank test. Then another scenario could be if you want to compare means between three or more independent groups. This one is not of this, this is all or more independent groups. Then example could be, could be is there a difference in crop yield if a farmer uses fertilizer A, B, or C? So if what you want to perform this parametric test, then you can use analysis of variance. But if you are using non-parametric test, you can use cost curve what is test. Okay. And again, finally, uh, another scenario could be estimate the degree of association between two variables. Okay, in that case, example in this regard could be does the number of hours a person spend on social media affect the number of hours they sleep at night. So if that's what you're trying to investigate, and you check your data, the data you collected, they are normally distributed. And they fulfill, I mean, they fulfill all the conditions for a parametric, for a parametric test. They use parametric tests, and what it tells you can do here is passing coefficient of correlation. But if they fail those two conditions, then you can use non-parametric test, which is Spearman's real correlation. Okay, this I have mentioned before. So please let's take note of this one. Okay, so that is that on today's lessons. But if you have any question, please let me have it. I've shared the attendance um, link, so please click on it and fill up. So if you have any question, please let me have Hello, doctor. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm just wondering, so for the parametric, uh, par for the parametric, uh, this par parametric, um, Calculation. Do we have to be? Do we have to use uh, normal, normally distributed uh, data? So what if the data is skewed? Yeah, that's why I said. That's why I said before you choose whether to use parametric or non-parametric. There are some condition you have to check, okay. and those condition I mentioned. I'm going to show you now. Okay. okay? Thank you. May I ask you questions, Professor? Oh, please, 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 order, please, order. Uh, I would like please, to ask you questions. Please, 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 order, um, please, order, do please, order. Do I need to submit or send assignment about computer application? If so, how? How many words and topic, please? Please, order. OK. Now, uh, from your question just now, if you look at this place, this had some assumptions that you need to check. These two assumptions, the first and second assumptions, if your data or your variable, whatever, fulfill this uh, assumption, then you can use parametric test. 
Yeah. And what are the tests that can be done under parametric? You have T test, F test, Z test, ANOVA test. Now, it now depends on what you are trying to check. If you are trying to check for equality of variance, then you use F test. Okay? Then if you want to check for relationship or whatever, then you can check. Anyway, we have discussed, please just check. It. Then if you want to check for normality, if you want to check whether your, uh, your whatever, your variable or whatever is normally distributed or not, then you can use any of these tests. But these tests we have not run now. We are going to run, we are going to do this when we go to, when we get to SPSS. So just be patient a bit on this. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh -huh. so um, your question, please, Mr. Mr. Mamoudoul Hassan. Yes. Yes, you're saying something. I you're want to something? ask, uh, do I have to submit assignment, computer application about? Yeah, they have said this over and over and over. The assignment is there. I'm not saying that the assignment is not there. Okay. Yeah. But at this point, please channel your strength and energy to your research first. Yes. Because assignment is just to ensure that uh, probably maybe uh, yeah, you have been coming, you do, and again, to test your knowledge to some extent. An assignment can be done, it's just, it's just for internal evaluation purpose. An yes. assignment can be done within two or three days. So I within these 14 weeks of classes, I will not request for any assignment submission from you. Okay? So if you are going to submit your beloved submission, it will be after, not now. Thank you, sir. So please do your assignment then, after you have gathered whatever you've got to apply, but focus on your research now. Later, you can do your assignment and submit, especially if your... Uh, if CPS request from you or your supervisor ask you to do, then it's fine. But for my hand, I will not request anything from you. All I'm interested in is capture this skill, whatever we are discussing here. Think, figure out how to key in this into your research. Because that's the goal of this class. That's the, that's the, that's the university goal for, this, for, 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 for arranging this particular class and the research methodology class, just to ensure that you, uh, you get all the necessary skill and plans well. And when you apply that in your research, you can straight away finish your work within a short period of time. But if you are now distracting yourself, then how do you want to finish on time? So please try to, uh, yes, assignment, I'm not, that's why I said, I'm not saying that you should rule out the assignments. Okay, I'm not saying, I'm not asking to rule out the assignment. What I'm saying is that do your assignment when you are less busy. Channel your strength to your research work first. Okay? Because if you don't do it now, then if you think that uh, I've already, you know, I've attended the class, I've learned it, when the time comes, it will not be like that. It will be a different story. Okay? So please channel your strength to your work first now. If they need the assignment, at the appropriate time, they request for it, then do it and submit. Okay? I'm not saying that you should not do the assignment, but channel your strength to your work first. After that, then you can do the assignment and submit. But within these 14 weeks, within these 14 weeks, they will not request for any assignment from you. And how will not request for any assignment from you either? Okay? So that is, I think I've answered your question, Mr. Mamudu. Okay, so any other question, please? Any other question? Sir, is computer application applicable for every student, every researcher, sir? sir. Is com computer applications applicable for every students, student? Of course. If you have joined this class from the very, which I believe you have joined from the very beginning, all we have been doing, we are not restricted, we are not restricting ourselves to a particular field. All I have been doing is more of general view of everything. 
we have discussed about sources of data. We have discussed of search engines where you can get related articles from medical line, related articles from management and the likes. So we have discussed on this. So it's for everybody. Okay. Yes. It's now left for you to look at those tools from your own context and choose the one that suits your need. I'm not saying that you must do everything that we have been discussing. You only choose the yes. one that fills into your requirements. It's as simple as that. Yes. Okay. So that is that. So um, any other question? Okay. In the absence of none, I think we we'll call it a day. And uh, please, if you have any issue, the so choice of test depends on sample size. For example. Choice of test depends on the nature of the data you have collected and what you are targeting. Okay? Choice of test depends on the kind of data you have collected. So if you have collected that data, I you now check whether it fulfills those conditions, those parametric conditions, then use parametric test. Then other parameters, remember we have our four different tests. So it also depends on what you are trying to do. You are trying to investigate the relationship, whether the relationship between whatever, whatever is significant or not. And also, if you want to check for uh, equivalent of variances, then also whether you are evaluating your, your data comes from more than two groups, it depends. So it solely depends on the kind of data, not sample size. Then later, after you have decided this, then you cannot check. I think I have another table on that, which I also shared with you, which is this one. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I remember I shared this with you. Um, here. So it is only when you are thinking about whether you want to use one sample test, uh, set test, two sample related z test, two sample related z test, one sample t test, two sample related t test, and two sample related t test. Then you look at this condition. Okay, that's why you'll now be talking whether your data is less than 30 or is more than 30. Okay, it solely depends on the uh, your scenario, your research scenario. Okay, so just look at this condition and see if you fulfill any of them, then apply the one that most in line with your research work. Okay. Uh, choice of, yeah, that's all. Okay. Oh, any other question? Okay, so in the absence of none, thank you. Stay safe and see you again next week. Okay, bye. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you.